This is the Giant Trance X Advanced Pro 291. I've been on this bike for just a few months and I feel like now is the perfect time for a review. First off, shout out to Mike's Bikes for hooking me up with this thing so I can produce more content for you guys and also try different bikes. What I like about this build is that Giant spec'd it with carbon bars, carbon wheels, and the carbon frame. They definitely save some money on aspects of the bike that the customer is likely gonna change anyways. The bike comes spec'd with XO tires that I swapped out, Giant's very own carbon bars, a Giant contact dropper post, GX drivetrain along with SRAM G2 brakes. What I really like about this build is that it comes with performance elite suspension. And that's something that a lot of people probably aren't gonna change on this bike, but they will change things like the cockpit, the drivetrain, the tires, stuff like that. So it definitely saves the customer money. This bike is a 135, 150 trail bike, and it slots that category with the DPX2, as well as the 36 up front. Looking into the geometry on this bike, it's got a 438 millimeter chainstay. It has a 77.2 degree seat tube angle, as well as a 65.5 degree head tube angle. So where does this bike land? I would say this bike slots right down into the trail category. Uh, I rode it on some blacks as well as some blues and some greens, and I would say this thing, uh, it prefers flow and it definitely likes to climb. If you are racing enduro or you're thinking this bike is gonna double as a bike park bike over summer, I might not recommend it to you. The climbing performance on this bike out the gate is extremely efficient. The Maestro suspension works really well. It gives you traction on the climbs and it also produces almost no pedal bob. The bike is extremely light. I'd put this thing, this is a size XL on the low 30 side, um, especially with the XO tires. This thing was super light footed. It felt like it could pedal really quickly on the climbs and it didn't feel like a slug at all. As far as downhill goes, I said earlier, this thing is very comfortable on the blues and greens. It likes flow, it doesn't like tons of rocks, it tends to get hung up just a little bit, but that's not something out of the ordinary for a trail bike. I ended up putting an angle set reducer in the bike, so I dropped it down to a 64 and a half degree head tube angle, and I found that it felt a little bit more confidence inspiring on the downhills. Exo tires were super quick rolling. They helped a lot with the climbs, but I found that the braking traction, as well as like the overall confidence when I was going downhill, especially on chunkier terrain, I just didn't feel like I had trust in the tires. So I ended up swapping them out early for these Continental Cryptotal uh, downhill casing tires. And so I mentioned the suspension. It's got the Performance Elite Fox 36 up front, which has the Grip 2 dampener. And then it has the DPX2 Performance Elite as well in the rear. I definitely think the suspension on this bike is well thought out. It's something that the customer's probably not gonna change. And I think that you can get it dialed in really well. I would say that the base tune on it, at least for my weight at 190 pounds, like 86 kilos, I felt like the volume spacers were perfect. It's got a 0.2 in the rear and then two volume tokens in the fork. It ended up being perfect for me. I tried to go up and down. I would settle in with how it was stock if you're around my weight. And I put 220 PSI in the shock and I'm running 100 PSI in the fork. So who's gonna buy this bike? I did mention this bike slots into that trail category. If you're gonna race enduro or you're gonna do bike park laps in the summer, this bike might not be for you. But if you like climbing, you want to be on the trails longer, do bigger rides, but you also want it to perform on the downhill, I do think that this bike fits the category for you. It definitely slots that trail category. If you're looking for enduro, bike park stuff over summer, this is not the bike I would recommend for you. Even with the angle set reducer making it 64 and a half for the head tube angle, I felt like it was more confidence inspiring, but just on the chunkier stuff, it tended to just get hung up uh, and kind of want to push me forward. I would say that riding this bike, if you prefer like uh, in the bike versus like sitting on the bike, it, this bike does not feel like you're in the bike. You're very much on the bike. I feel like I had to lower my brake levers so that I could just ride a little bit more over the front. It doesn't feel like you're sitting in it. Overall, I'm very happy with the build. Like I mentioned earlier, it's got the carbon frame, carbon wheels, and carbon bars. This is a size XL, and they spec it with a 175 millimeter dropper, which because of how long the seat tube is, I found that it got low enough, but it didn't quite come up high enough um, for a comfortable pedaling position. So one of the first things that I changed was the 210 dropper, and it's completely slammed. 
So the seat tube on this bike runs like 496 millimeters. Uh, completely slammed for me with like a 32, 33 inch inseam. It ended up being perfect with the 210 drop of the one up. I have not really got along with these brakes much. The SRAM G2s, they're specced with 180 millimeter rotor rear and 200 in the front. I think maybe if I tried some different rotors with different pads, I could be a bit more comfortable on this bike. But just right now, I have not been getting along with these SRAM G2 brakes. I haven't really enjoyed SRAM brakes in the past. The codes as well as code RSCs, I just have never really gotten along with them well. I think the XO tires are perfect if you plan on racing this bike and you want it to be quick on the climbs. But I felt like the, I wanted something a bit thicker, like an XO Plus would have been okay. Um, maybe even a double down depending on what you're riding, but I feel like the XO Plus would have been perfect. I ended up tossing on these Continental Cryptotal. Uh, these are the super soft downhill casings, which are like a double down of a Maxxis. And I feel like that made the bike feel more confidence inspiring along with the, the angle set reducer. So if you bought this bike and you were looking to change things, really just be more about like the cockpit stuff, like maybe keeping the bar, but change the grips, uh, change the stem so that the bike feels a bit more like home. The exo tires might cut it, but I definitely think that the tires are something you should consider. If you're on a smaller size frame, small, medium, large, the dropper post may not be a big issue for you. But if you're a tall guy like me, you're definitely going to want to try changing out the 175 dropper to something with a bit more drop. Giant wasn't really on my radar before riding this thing. I just feel like here in Northern California, there aren't a lot of giants on the trails and I hadn't ridden one before, so I was really keen to try this out. I will say that overall, the bike has been great. I haven't had a single bolt come loose. It's relatively quiet, doesn't make a lot of noise. The paint scheme on this bike with the raw carbon as well as the flake gray, I just think it looks amazing. The paint hasn't been chipping, hasn't been fading. Overall, I've been really happy with the fit and finish of the Giant. Well, I hope I've given this bike justice. If you're in the market for a Giant Trance X Advanced, definitely take a look here, drop some questions below, and until then, thanks for watching.